वेलकम टू न्यूज लॉन्ड्री छोटा हफ्ता फॉर द फुल एपिसोड सब्सक्राइब बिकॉज इट इज बिहाइंड द पे वॉल एंड ओनली सब्सक्राइबर्स गेट एक्सेस टू अनकट कंप्लीट कॉन्टेंट न्यूज लॉन्ड्री हफ्ता इज आ वीकली रैप ऑफ ऑल दैट मेड द न्यूज ऑल दैट डिडेंट एंड ऑल दैट शुड हैव एंड ऑल दैट शुडेंट हैव वी अग्री वी डिसग्री विद क्रिटिक एंड ओकेजनली वी बीट इच अदर अप बट इट्स ऑल गुड फन सब्सक्राइब This is a news laundry podcast and you're listening to NL Hafta. Angrez apna lagan aur news laundry apna hafta kabhi nahi chhodte. Welcome to another episode of NL Hafta. It is 3:20 in the afternoon as we record this Thursday the 12th of January. And even as we record this the Delhi government versus the LG or the center is being heard in the Supreme Court by Constitution bench. We can discuss a little bit of that in this episode. uh but before i introduce the panel i would just like to announce a new nl sena project the hills suffer joti joshimat and beyond this nl sena project has been done by the most accomplished and amazing journalist ridesh joshi you have seen ridesh's other work on our channel on news laundry he's done a documentary on on poisoning or or silica arsenic silica arsenic, arsenic poisoning uh, he's done several reports for us do check it out So Hridesh and producer Madhu Kumar are right now in Joshimat they will bring you a very detailed on ground report mm. and Hridesh is one of the finest journalists to cover environment mm. and he also does it with passion because he is from Uttarakhand so do contribute for this NL Sena project the link is in the show notes below you can also go on to newslaundry.com and click on our Sena project we can do reports deep down detailed reports like this only if you support us not if we do it on ads by governments which in any case these days i believe are being governments are being asked to pay it back or at least political parties <laughs> let's see if that happens across the country balle balle but even then it should not come to us news people news should be run by those who consume it which is the citizens so do contribute to this nl sena project we would be most most grateful on that note uh let's get the headlines and then we shall go on to the panel yes pakistan's economy is in dire straits with very high inflation dangerously low foreign exchange reserves and global lenders like the imf refusing to disperse further funds in fact But, we will have someone from pakistan discussing this in yeah. the first segment currently pakistan sits on the verge of economic collapse with its hopes pinned on getting concessions from the imf on the extended fund facility established in 2019 as well as getting help from friendly nations in the form of long term loans or donations saudi arabia has committed 210 billion dollars so far the chamoli district administration of uttarakhand ordered the demolition of two hotels in the joshimat town where large cracks appeared in homes and on roads authorities have also marked 86 homes as unsafe for living forcing many residents to seek shelter in different areas the town has been declared as a disaster prone area and in fact uh, ridesh's report will look at how This isn't just the only place. There are about six hundred spots in Uttarakhand which are substance right. land Karan sinking. Pra- Karan Prayag also they're seeing. Yeah, there are of... many other areas, and I mean I've spent my childhood in those mountains. Man, yeah. we used to trek there every year, twice a year. An interim assistance of rupees one point five lakh has been given to affected people, and details of relief and rehabilitation are being worked out. That's what the CM said. In fact, uh, Dhami is going to spend tonight there. They said he's going to spend the night at Joshimat, hmm. and. Uh, They think the prime minister will also visit. Or no, visit they, he no. held a high level prime meeting just, afterwards. Uh, you know, sent NDA team. I see. He didn't uh, visit him. Uh, he did see. review. Okay. Here, and okay. Uh, he sent an NDA meeting. But I must note that all these channels, many of them, this Amish, Aman, and all who are following the prime minister to Kedarnath every time he goes there, have not at all shown anything on prime time on Joshimat. Mm. As such, NDA has done a good job, but a lot of these channels have completely ignored this. Meanwhile the bulldozer has entered Rajasthan uh, the congress led government on monday demolished a building where two persons accused in a teacher recruitment exam paper leak were running a coaching center so no faisla on the spot is just yeah it's gaining the bjp in rajasthan has welcomed this so basically everybody is welcoming this bulldozer yeah. justice Ministry of Information and Broadcasting on Monday advised television channels against reporting incidents of accidents deaths and violence in a manner that is grossly that grossly compromises good taste and decency. So I found it interesting this the context was uh, the cricketer's accident hmm. uh, near Roorkee uh, Pant right mm-hmm. Pant uh, who was Rishabh Pant Rishabh Pant who was hurt and I think they had video of 
him being dragged out of the car there was some good samaritan who actually did that hmm. and that i'm guessing you know the indian cricket must have taken it to bcci where mr shah's son who's not there because of nepotism but because of his brilliance in cricket administration is sitting that is reason enough for them to issue an advisory but way worse happens on a daily basis mm-hmm. and there is no advisory i think it is it is shocking that this just goes by without any pushback from television channels matlab itne wo survival hai yaar Hmm. The DMK and its allies on Monday held a protest against Tamil Nadu Governor R N Ravi as he began his customary address at the start of the assembly session. Posters saying "Get out, Ravi" were put out at multiple places in Chennai, and the first day of Tamil Nadu assembly witnessed unprecedented scenes with Governor R N Ravi walking out of the house as his face-off with the governing party there continued. We'll so discuss we'll it in discuss some detail with Shabir. This is getting increasingly, I mean, confrontational. In fact, there yeah. is a delegation of DMK. who has met the president today uh saying that this guy needs to be called yeah. back hmm. the congress on wednesday invited 21 political parties to join the concluding event of the bharat joro yatra in shrinagar on january 30th is the second day of the yatra in punjab uh, rahul gandhi went to the golden temple he was seen praying there he's been yes. walking around <laughs> so and the, the and, colors of and the different the, shades the, of turban and the biggest controversy there is that why did he not wear a saffron Uh-huh. It's after the next day, the turban, and this morning, this uh, young lady who was anchoring on India Today asks the reporter on the ground. So he did not wear a saffron saffa on the second day. Is it because he's anti-Sikh, or is it some other reason like the color? Come on, really? <laughs> is it because he's anti? He wore a red turban. I mean, so what? He's what a communist. Sikh? Like what is he? Communist? Or like, I mean, <sighs> who puts these guys on on air, man? It's just this. You know, but, but one the, would think that the person anchoring a show would be a little higher, would and not the average Twitter intelligence level. You know, traditionally, you thought journalists, the people on anchoring, are actually below the average IQ or intelligence yeah. level of Twitter. Well, luckily, even Punjab voters they see through this yeah. thing, so that is why BJP could never make <laughs> could never question. make an inroads. You know, so is it because he's anti-Sik? <laughs> Anyway, wow. Some other I mean, people his, in other uh, states may buy this, but Punjabis don't. One of his speeches also went viral where he said, "Man, Rahul Gandhi ko maar diya." Tum sochte rehte ho, maine sochta. That was philosophical. I mean, I, I, I didn't see. I. You are really you melting mean, towards Rahul Gandhi. No, I can I'm see. not melting towards. <laughs> no, Rahul I get. So I get you. He, it <laughs> was. It, it's a very philosophical, very but philosophical. that's not a. It lacks political instinct. Ah, uh, that that is true. It lo. It lacks the true. weight of. being philosophical also that he just so, doesn't sound philosophical <laughs> doesn't work in politics <laughs> simplistic uh, but even he doesn't even sound philo- anyway mm. i should not criticize him too much let us see what happens after the yatra nobody is 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 uh, this thing is is bharat jodo yatra is making waves yeah. and they going to unfold the at tricolor apparently at least we are able to see his picture every day <laughs> Otherwise, the inside yeah. picture. Otherwise, we could never see. And mm. every day, I'm just checking uh, every inch of dadi that he's, <laughs> he's growing. Mm. A government will not be able to function if it does not have the power to manage civil services. That's what the Delhi government told the Supreme Court on Tuesday. Meanwhile, it's major LG versus uh, Kejriwal happening, where Arvind Kejriwal has been asked to pay rupees 163 crore. <laughs> Which LG says has been misspent on ads, and they've been asked to pay this within ten days. And the misspending is that you've used political fact, no, ads for yeah, promotion. Yeah, but they haven't said which ads. So right now, uh, today, the deputy chief minister held a press conference saying that we've asked the LG show us which ads you're talking about. That what have we done that is so different from the ads that we see <laughs> yeah. of the Haryana government, of Yogi Ji's government, of the Karnataka government in Delhi every day in Delhi yeah. newspapers yeah. with Modi's. So we want to see what have we done that is so different. and if it isn't then we would love to see this same recovery happen from all the states ah. and there this thing is that is an ias officer who has a position in the communications department mm-hmm. of the delhi government so it's actually the delhi government who has sent this notice to aap so it is technically arvind kejriwal's government is sending a notice to arvind kejriwal's party saying you pay this otherwise we will take over your mm-hmm. but this that otherwise we will seize your office has been reported in papers that is not in the notice that is sent to oh. kejriwal okay. are you sure because i remember reading the notice a while ago when it had first come and it did say that it will no. be today in the press conferences this is what we have received and it just says give it legal action days. will be taken and this communication department also 
the new LG had changed the entire staff, yeah. everything, and uh, as soon as they joined, they started auditing. Yeah, right. Uh, you know, each ads. In an interview to organizer in Panchajanya, RSS chief Mohan Bhagwat has said that members of the LGBTQ community and transgender people have the same right to live as others. He also said that Muslims have nothing to fear, but they must abandon their supremacy narrative. Don't yeah. think you are better than us. <laughs> Which is, I mean, again, it's 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 a bit of a nothing interview, but it, everything the RSS chief says goes becomes an issue these no, days. No, I right? think uh, I we can't say it's not. It's, no, uh, in the sense, it, it needs to be taken note of. Hmm. Because he is endorsing the, uh, you know, whatever is happening in our country right now. That 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 this war is 100, uh, 1,000 old war between Hindu and Muslim. Oh, that, okay, that's yeah. what he's saying. Okay. He has used that word, 1,000 right. old. So, so if, since it is so old, so, so it is, I mean, Hindu is bound to be aggressive. He's not using the word Hindu, hmm. but they are bound to be aggressive. They are bound to, you know, uh, get their space. So it's a civilizational war. Basically, ha, ha, he's doing the same ha, cultural. Ha, ha. Okay. Hmm. So, so any time, if suppose love jihad happens, if if an adult uh, Hindu girl, which uh, I have just come across, you know, I know someone in uh, Maharashtra, you know, uh, they, they, there's a young woman who has eloped with a Muslim man and the fa family have already filed a case of love jihad. So, so, so this is the, I mean, these kind of statements, you know, hmm. Uh, that's what uh, divide the society. Vice President Jagdeep Dhankar on Wednesday said that the Supreme Court's decision to strike down the NGAC Act was a quote-unquote scenario perhaps unparalleled in the democratic history of the world. Right. The Bombay High Court on Monday ordered the release of former ICICI Bank CEO Chanda Kochar and her husband Deepak Kochar. Uh, it said that their arrests in a loan fraud case were not in accordance with the law. I mean, I'm wondering if there's more to this story than meets the eye uh. I don't know. I mean, it'll just take a huge deep dive because ICICI is a very influential bank, actually. And the former chief of ICICI, Mr. Kamat, is one of the most influential men in finance in the country. I mean, the court what? is saying that it is not in accordance with law. There's this big loan. There have been, I mean, one can't take specific names, but bigger loans have been given on weaker grounds in our country by, oh. by banks. I'm wondering if there's more to it than meets the eye. Anyway. Hmm. The movie RRR wins... The best song at the Golden Globe, so it's time for celebrations for us. And also Kashmir Files got a non-nomination <laughs> at Oscars. No. Yeah. <laughs> it, so. <laughs> it made it to the reminder list uh, with 300 films and everyone, all channels were talking about it, like 40 minutes, 50 minutes debate on how this... Vivek this is. Agni Hotri is an intellectual who appears on every channel whenever he wants, like... Times now is his you know, blog, I, yeah, when he wants to just talk shit. In he, fact, I was He's thinking, just there, just talking shit with... Times are anchor nodding their head. The only other person who gets this much attention from Times is uh, Jaggi Vasudev. Yeah, I mean anything. Jaggi Vasudev and Vivek Agnihotri. Any just, nonsense they want to talk. Every second month. They just yes. have this video and they're just talking like complete bullshit. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> uh, so let's uh, introduce the panel first. So on the panel today, uh, in the studio, we have our managing editor, Raman Kripal. Hi. Our executive editor, Manisha Pandey. Hello. And uh, joining us on the phone line from Pakistan is Khurram Hussain. Hi, Khurram. Hi, how are you? Very well. Thank you so much for having the time to join us. I will just introduce you to our viewers in case they need to know who you are. I'm sure many of them have already read your stuff. Uh, Khurram Hussain is a leading business and economics journalist in Pakistan. He's based out of Karachi. Uh, he has also taught at the Lahore University of Management Science in the past. He writes a widely read column in Dawn. It's Pakistan's leading English language newspaper. He's been a contributor to the BBC, providing short features on economic issues as well as appearing as an analyst for English and Urdu languages services. You can read his stuff on the link in the show notes below uh, where we have a collection of Khurram's work. And also uh, Shabir Ahmadli joining us later. Shabir works with the News Minute as a senior news editor. Before that, he was heading the Tamil Nadu Bureau of Times Now. He reports uh, from Tamil Nadu on governance, politics and crime and other social political issues. He also hosts a show called... Please tell us what the show is called before I murder the pronunciation, Shabir. Yeah, you should try. You should try okay. doing that. Yeah, yeah, you are half Tamil. Yeah, show us, show yeah us. Shabir will be very ashamed by just hearing that I'm half Tamil. Ye Endra Kelvi with Shabir Ahmad. Ye Endra Kelvi, is that right? Ye Endra Kelvi, yes. Ye Endra Kelvi, okay. You were close. Which means? Which means... Uh, why? It's basically... Oh, 
Yeah. Why? So you it's, can... it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a line from MGR's song. Hmm. So that's what... And it simply means saying. why. That's it. Yeah, it means why. Why is the question? Like, oh. It's something like that, yeah. Why is the question? So th- this is a bit like the Japanese Lost in Translation with uh, I think what James Belushi. Have you seen that film with Scarlett Johansson? Yeah, it was yeah. when she was just a child where this they say this long thing and then so you translate this like one word. <laughs> so, yeah, 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 yeah. so um you can check out uh, Shabir's show. The link is in the show notes below. And also do contribute to the News Minute. <laughs> they also do take subscriptions. They call it memberships. Please ensure that you can support them and they don't have to go for any ads because they do some fantastic ground reports. So let's first discuss what's happening in Pakistan with Khurram. The skyrocketing price of wheat, that's just, uh, you know, to some extent that owes itself to the disruption of supply chains and the disruptions caused by the floods. Um, but to some extent also, uh, that's it's also mismanagement. Um, and, uh, you know, for the since about uh, April, Pakistan has been in a protracted political crisis uh, mm. of sorts. And, uh, you know, wheat availability in the market depends crucially on the wheat procurement that takes place in the months of uh, May, June, uh, uh, primarily. And uh, that depends very heavily on a smoothly functioning government machinery that uh, provincial and federal that is responsible for this wheat procurement. Uh, And uh, historically, whenever we've seen the wheat procurement drive sort of fail to reach its targets, then uh, round about this time, uh, when the wheat sowing season begins, uh, there, there, there are reports of shortages. This time, the shortages are more aggravated than they have been in the past. And But um, there have been shortages around this time before as well. I mean, this is not yes. like an outlier. It may this be an outlier in terms of the level of shortage, but it is not new for there to be a shortage this time, basically. It, it's not entirely new. Right. And uh, usually the government of the day m- makes up for it by importing wheat very rapidly from the spot markets. Um, but I this see. time, you know, I think... Uh, the forex crisis the protract- kind of doesn't allow that, so therefore it kind of feeds in. I see. And, you know, when whenever politicians fight in this way in Pakistan, uh, governance is what suffers. I mean, the people suffer, uh, definitely. But governance usually ends up uh, taking a back seat to, to all other decisions. And, pa- and that's what's happening right now. And Imran has that kind of popular support for him to hold the country to ransom like this? Uh, it would seem so, yes. Uh, the, the popular support is considerable, but much of it is uh, uh, is uh, clump. You know, there, there, there's a, a very large concentration of uh, seats and uh, um, registered voters in central Punjab, for example, where he draws huge crowds where he has won a uh, large number of by-elections since he was ousted in uh, from power in, in April. Uh, in the city of Karachi, uh, I think every observer will, will, will agree that there is huge potential for uh, someone like Imran Khan to come and tap a very large vote bank that is looking for leadership over here. Uh, but the rest of, and, and of course, KP province, his popularity is considerable and entrenched over there. He's been in power since 2008. His party has been in power since 2008. Um, and and they have uh, been winning uh, re-elections over there. In fact, the first party to do so in about 30 years. You know, KP had a tradition of voting out incumbents in every election. And that it's, the, it's Imran Khan's party that broke that tradition. So, uh, hi, this is Raman. Uh, so, what are the cascading effects, uh, you know, uh, on the people? I mean, we haven't read much of the ground reports. So, how is it impacting the people and should we call it building off an economic crisis or you are already into a crisis? Well, I think in terms of the, the crisis question, it depends on what we what we understand by the word crisis. Mm-hmm. Uh, many people here in Pakistan are using the word crisis to describe the situation to, today. Uh, myself, I tend to be a bit more cautious in how I use words. Uh, so I define a situation as a crisis when it begins to produce disruptive effects in the lives of ordinary citizens. So just tell us the economics of not just right now, but generally, what what in your understanding is this economic kind of uh, instability in Pakistan? What causes it? Is it just inst- unstable governments or is there, like they say, no, governments can change, but the rulers remain the same. It's mm. those hundred families. Uh, is what what do you think is the root cause? 
the root cause I trace back to an inability on the part of the country's elites to agree on the rules of the game for the system of rule or, you know, the, 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 the rules of the game regarding the dispensation of power in the country. So it's the repeated, if you just look at the long-term history of Pakistan, you see that there are 10-year periods of military dictatorship followed by 10 years of uh, uh, sort of a, 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 a democratic government um, and then back to dictatorship again. So this pendular swing that you keep having between dictatorship and democracy basically tells you that uh, rule, the rules of the game about how who will rule, how will that, uh, how will power be legitimized have not been agreed upon. And um, as a result, uh, power is constantly being contested. Now, having understood that, the next stage to understand is how uh, successive uh, military peri episodes of military rule have sought to actively weaken the foundations of democratic and civilian uh, rule in the country. Uh, by and this happens through a very uh, through a variety of means, you know, attacking the political parties, uh, imprisoning their leadership. In one case, at least executing uh, the the, mm. the the leader, um, inducting uh, new people into the political space that the dictators themselves have chosen and brought into uh, into the political space. And after the transition from dictatorship to democracy has happened, then working from behind the scenes to continuously keep the civilian government of uh, you know uh, in a, in a in a situation of permanent instability um and this works through various ways as well by interfering in parliamentary uh, arithmetic uh, breaking people away from uh, the political parties through inducements and threats uh, by grooming and cultivating um their own players uh, and uh, bringing them up you know nawaz sharif was born and raised in the nursery of a dictator and uh, brought into power as a prime minister in uh, 1991 and uh, 1990. This goes back to the point I was making earlier about uh, using, uh, you know, keeping the political, the civilian political space in a in a in a situation of permanent disarray. So, you know, aside from the ISI, the intelligence bureau over here also does have the capacity and the power to uh, to tap uh, phone calls and make recordings and retain those recordings. So actually over here, the debate on, over who actually did this uh, is is unfinished. Um, it's, it's not clear who made these recordings and who leaked them. And has it cost uh, him politically? Um, I don't think so. I think it, it may have cost him in terms of some of the swing voters, and there are still swing voters, despite the fact that it's a very sharply polarized environment that we have. Uh, there still are uh, large numbers of swing voters and I think many people, you know, it, it sort of helped to take the shine off the halo of holiness and piety that Imran Khan surrounded himself with. Oh, did or he? cloaked himself in. Oh, okay. Um, that maybe he's a human being like the rest of us. You know, if, if, you, if, you, if you listen to his speeches regularly, if you have the misfortune to have to listen to those speeches <laughs> regularly, um, you know, it, it, a lot of it is like doused in religion and piety and, uh, and, and, and whatnot. So I think with the release of these tapes, some people would undoubtedly have second thoughts and say, well, maybe the, the reality is something different from uh, the image that we, uh, that, that we have. But I mean, if you ask me, okay, that, does this mean it's curtains down for Imran or anything like that? No, not at all. And frankly, I think you guys are lucky if this has not been covered extensively in India. It's an absolutely disgusting thing to have to, uh, to you know, to have to deal with as a news professional. Mm. Uh, yeah. Uh, how significant is the, let's say, the damage he can do to governance? Like in Delhi, the LG can completely damage governance as he's demonstrated. But in Tamil Nadu, other than just it become noise for the media, can he actually inhibit the function of the state in any way significantly? Well, he is already doing that because he is sitting on at least 21 bills without giving his assent, which uh, one, of, one of the bill is uh, uh, regarding on, you know, prohibiting online gambling. Uh, there is a serious issue in Tamil Nadu where people uh, who are addicted towards online gambling, they have lost huge amount of money and at least, uh, you know, more than 20 people have lost their lives. Uh, and that was the reason why the government constituted a committee. And based on that, uh, they brought in an ordinance. And after that, uh, uh, you know, the governor initially agreed. He gave his assent for the ordinance, but uh, 
later when the bill was sent to him he is uh, you know sitting on that bill he has not uh, provided his assent for the bill and meanwhile uh, what the governor does is in fact uh, he holds a meeting with the uh, uh, the members and representatives of e gambling uh, uh, federation e gaming federation and that has also become uh, a controversy because there was no uh, official you know press release or information that was shared about this meeting so all this happened within the four walls of rajbhavan so there is lot of uh, you know controversy uh, as far as uh, governor arun ravi is concerned uh, tamil anthem that that is a song that uh, we have in tamil nadu so we play that but the governor wanted national anthem to be played the government said no and then uh, the governor's uh, speech when they were preparing the governor's speech in fact he had certain uh, clarifications and the gov- government accepted and there was some bargaining and i think the governor agreed the governor said okay he gave his uh, you know he said okay for uh, the speech that was prepared by the state government but ac- when he actually came uh, to the assembly on the floor of the house i don't know what happened uh, the governor decided that he will skip certain portions which is uh, you know he did not name ambedkar he did not name periyar he did not name kamaraj uh, who is a former chief minister he did not name uh, kalender karnanidhi who is also the former chief minister so these were the names that were skipped and uh, uh, also you know the tamil nadu government has been branding itself as a dravidian model government like mm. the gujarat model or the kerala model or the delhi model the tamil nadu government says that they are a dravidian model and that's that has been stalin's uh, tagline mm. and wherever he goes he speaks about that and he is someone uh, who wants to brand this his government as a dravidian model of government but the governor refused to use that word he refused to utter that word and all these things uh, i think uh, uh, you know angered the state government because usually the rule on the floor of the house is whenever the governor addresses the house there will not be any kind of uh, discussion or debate on that on that particular day so that is the rule but that convention was broken because the governor forced the government to do that and that was the reason why the why mk stalin stood up and he said uh, while the governor was sitting in the speaker's chair he stood up and he said that he is going to bring this resolution because he is saddened by what has happened on the floor of the house yeah the i gov- saw that so so the yeah. governor knew what he was saying because he said it in tamil so he, does does mr ravi understand tamil no, no ravi does not understand behind. tamil in fact he was sitting there but when he actually wanted to know what it was he was asking his uh, secretary and uh, his adc i think they told him that this is what is happening right in front of his eyes and uh, that's when he, he got up and left i see and he got up and he just walked out of uh, the assembly that's something which has never happened in tamil nadu assembly this is the first time we are seeing governor walking out of the assembly and it was dramatic and uh, as far as the ai admk is concerned they have no other option but at this but rate to... at this rate i mean in the state the dmk will continue to win with the ai admk being second fiddle to the bjp which is actually trying to weave a narrative which will not be acceptable to tamil people irrespective of the party they are in i mean they whether it's dmk or ai dmk no one likes the hindi no, hegemony so i think there's a presumption hmm. but as i see it all the governors uh, going to the non bjp states they i think they are uh, they first go to some kind of class where they are being told that how politically to they have to fight uh, <laughs> each of these government and you have to make Galaxy a case ha so 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 i mean if elections are 5 years later or 4 mm. years later or 3 years later but they need to play a political role not the conventional role as mm. set up uh, by the constitution or the british tradition mm. like uh, so so uh, so so i think this is very clearly uh, i mean you see it uh, for example maharashtra koshyari was making so much noise where is he now mm. he's lost Mm. because because the bjp backed government is has come, come back. so 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 uh, i think uh, in all the uh, maybe i mean in states like rajasthan there also i, I think he made some noise but maybe but I, CM I, is, I, he's also very astute and uh, he's very canny i think uh, that's what you would so <laughs> i, I, I to, agree with you uh, i agree with you because the same uh, thing happened in uh, pondicherry where kiran bedi yeah. was uh, the lieutenant governor yeah. Yeah. day in and day out there were problems with uh, narayan swami and kiran bedi every day mm. but uh, at one stage what happened was uh, you know when when elections were nearing 
Kiran Bedi became a common enemy for all political parties there in Pondicherry, and that's when the BJP decided. We'll transfer her, and she was taken out of Pondicherry. All of you listening in, the Chota Hafta do subscribe so you can listen to the entire Hafta. We will see you again next week with the Hafta. Till then, subscribe, pay to keep news free. Because when the public pays, the public is served, and advertisers pay. Advertisers served. Thank you. Goodbye. All the News Laundry podcasts are available on Stitcher, iTunes, and any other podcast platform. Please subscribe to News Laundry. Help us keep news independent. Catch all our podcasts on news, pop culture, current affairs, and sport. Visit newslaundry.com. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Sunli Africa, Mufat Khoro. Not to brag or anything, but News Laundry Hafta features in the top 50 in the world on SoundCloud in the news and politics category for podcasts. So do subscribe and see what you're missing. because when the public pays the public is served when advertisers pay advertisers are served subscribe help keep news independent and free all news laundry podcasts are available on iTunes and Stitcher and any other podcast platform